Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a GFX using rigs. It is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. I'm also going to be showing you how to download everything that's needed because I know some people got confused in the last one with downloading stuff. So go ahead and watch through the whole video if you want to find out. Anyway, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe and I hope you all enjoy. So first I'm going to be showing you how to download the old blender. I use 2.79, not the new version just because I don't know how to use it. So you will want to go onto the Blender website, which it's, you're not going to have to do this, but this is just in case. You want to go to Downloads, then you're going to want to go to Previous Versions, right under Downloads. Then you want to go to this little area where it says All Previous Versions, and you want to go to Download. This is going to take you to a new page where you can see every single Blender file that there has been. As you can see, like there's this one's the newest version, but I use the Blender 2.79, so I'd click on that. And then you want to find the right one for your PC. So for me, I am Windows, so I want to find 2.79 Windows, and there are loads of them as you can see. So for me, I just click one of the top ones, and it needs to be, for me, I like the Windows 64. If you can only take 32, then choose 32. And you can choose the MSI or the zip, but I obviously choose the zip. And you click on that and it's going to download it for you but i've already got it downloaded so i don't really need to worry about that i'm still going to show you the loading and setting up process just in case so then once it's downloaded it's going to come up like this and you want to go to downloads then you want to click on the blender file and you want to click extract so you want to click extract all extract it and it's going to take a little while to extract all the files. I'm going to have to delete this because, you know, there's no point in me having two files even though I have already one already. Anyway. Then after you've extracted it, you should have another file looking like this. And you want to click it. Then you want to click here. And as you can see, Blender is there. So that is the Blender that you use. You just need to open it and that's pretty much how you set up the Blender. Now you're going to need to download the rigs, which... That's pretty easy. All you do is click on the link in the description and click download. And it's, you know, it's pretty simple. It's, you, you've got it once you've downloaded it. You just need to put it into a documents. It cannot be in downloads because if it's in downloads, it's not going to show up once you're in Blender. You need to have it in documents. Okay, so now you want to get into Roblox Studios. I'll also leave a link in the description so you can go ahead and download that. If this little sort of thing pops up, just click ignore. You don't, don't delete it in case it's something that you need. Click base plate. Once that's loaded in, you're now going to want to load in your character. So I go into plugins and load character, but if you do not have this, I'm going to show you how to do it. You want to go over to view, then go down to the toolbox, open that up, and then you want to go over here to plugins and change this to load character light. This will show up as the first option and it is free to download. So you just click that and it will say get. You can get it. I've already got it but I need to update mine I'm not going to bother now because I'm doing a tutorial but you can update it if you want to then you want to go over to plugins and load character and you want to put in the username that you're going to be making a rig gfx for and then you want to spawn r6 and you can add in anything that you want to do so if you wanted to add in a camera so just ca look up camera in the models and you'll find a camera but we're not going to do that because it's just a beginner's rig tutorial I might make another one showing how to use like props and things like that and also hair and change the face and do all that kind of stuff in another video but for now we're just going to do the basics. If you do not have the explorer tab go over to view and click in the top left corner which is explorer. Click on your character and they'll come up in blue. Then you want to right click on it, go down to export selection and you want to save it to something. Keep in mind this needs to be in documents. If it's not in documents and it's in downloads, not going to work. Okay, now that we've exported it, we don't need Roblox Studios anymore and we just need to open Blender, which I've already showed you how to do. So you just wanna go over to Blender. So now that we're in Blender, this little thing here is gonna pop up. I just click off and this is what it's gonna look like. First of all, I like to pull this out because otherwise you can't really see anything that's going on in here. And you will notice that we have this little box thing. You just want to click X on your keyboard and then click delete. So once you've deleted the file, that's all done. You want to get used to the controls. So for moving about, you want to hold shift and then click X on your keyboard and you want to be able to move. If you want to quicken up pace, then hold shift as you're moving. There's the undo. So you want to go over to tools. So if you do something wrong and you want to undo it, then you can just go over to tools, go down until you see history, 
click it and click undo and that will undo whatever you've just done and then you can also redo and look at the history. So now I want to get out the ray. So I'm going to go to file and you want to click open, not the import that is going to import your actual person, but we don't want to do that yet. We're going to click open, hold shift and F and you want to go over to look at them basically. Now we want to make sure that the background is going to be transparent because with this, it is a cycles render. You need to make sure it's not a blender render, it is a cycles render. It's not going to be the same with the background. There is no shading option. It's not going to look like that. It's just completely different pretty much. So what you want to do is I'm going to close all of these. You want to scroll down until you see output and that is going to be in the camera section area. So you want to click on the camera, go down until you see output, click on it and go down. This is what you've got we're going to change this. So over here, there's a PNG section, which is what you want. Usually I think it's JPEG or something like that, but you want to make sure it is PNG. Usually it's going to be RGB, but you want to make it RGBA. And that is all you need to do to make sure that it is a transparent background. Once you've done that, you want to save this as a file because you want to make sure that when you open it, you don't have to do this every single time. So you want to go over to file and go down to save. And this is going to save this file to make sure that it's always going to be like this and you don't need to keep doing it. Next, you want to add on your clothes and all that. So we're going to click on the body part. I usually click on the right arm. We're going to go over to these three lines over here until we have like a little cross thing. And we're going to pull it down. I like to have it so it's half screen just because I find it easier. You want to go over to this little middle bit. Go to the left and you want to click on this little square. I'm going to go down till we find node editor and click that. Now this looks really confusing. It's really not. It's actually pretty simple, but what you want to do is zoom out. This is what it's going to look like. So this one right here and you can zoom in and pull it till you find it. Then you're going to click on this little file thing, which is going to open your files. This is why you need to make sure it is in either desktop or documents because it's not going to show the downloads over here, but you want to click on documents too. We don't need this bit anymore, so we're just going to get rid of it. Once we've done that, you've pretty much got the body all done and ready. So we want to right click on the arm or whatever you want to use. Anything that is not these little bendy bit. Then go over to file, go down until you find import and wavefront obj. Then you want to find your file that you've exported it to. Remember, it needs to be OBJ because otherwise it's not going to work. And then click import. Next, I'm going to zoom out and just delete everything that isn't the face since we've already got the body right here. Okay, so I was just been talking for like, I don't know how long and it didn't record any of it, which is Basically, great. Basically, what you had to do was you had to click on the body parts of your exported character, not the rig version, the one that was there. You want to click on it all and delete everything but the head and all the accessories. Then you want to right click on one of the accessories and click on everything, all the accessories for the head. And you want to go over to tool and join and set origin to geometry. Then you wanted to change it because it's going to be the wrong way around. So it would have been, which would have been this way around and you wanted to change it. So it's 180 in the rotation to turn it round. Then you wanted to pull it back and put it on top of the body and then you just wanted to resize it to whatever size you wanted it to be. So if you want to resize, you just click this little tool down here and that kind of, yeah, does that. So now I'm going to be showing you how to pose your character. So I'm just going to do like a really simple one. So to bend them, you're going to want to go over to this little tool here. I mean this one, until you have this little thing. And then I like to go to the side on global and I just like to pull it downwards. As you can see, it just looks so much more natural than the other version, the one without the rig. Even though this one kind of is a little bit more confusing, I definitely prefer it. So I would just recommend like going through it a few times just to kind of get the hang of it a bit. So now it looks like this, but I want it to be a little bit different. So I'm going to go over to this little thing again. I'm going to pull it in till it's like that. I'm going to do the same thing for this one here. Yeah. 
and you can make adjustments to whatever to make it like the pose that you want it to be. So because mine are usually just for my thumbnails, I like to just not bother with the legs. But if it is a leg kind of movement, if you want it to sit down or you do anything like that, for sitting down, you just want to click on this little area here, go to the side, go over to this little thing here and you want to click on view instead of global, then go over to the turning tool and just pull it up. Then go to the knee area where you can bend and just like kind of do something like this. And you want to do that for both of them until you have the pose that you want it to be like. This one, I don't really know how to pronounce it. That one pulls it to the side. So if you wanted it to go like that, if you wanted to do like the splits or something, you could do that but I'm not doing that, so. So now that we have that, that is pretty much the GFX with a rig that is for an overlay and stuff. But if you do want to know how to do it with a GFX background as well, then I'll be making a separate video on that as well as the ones for the accessories and props and all that kind of stuff. Now that we have this done, the camera isn't going to be already there. So if you go to view and click camera, nothing's going to happen. So you want to right click on the body part, on any body part, and then click shift and A at the same time. And you want to go down till you have camera and then you have a camera and you want to change the, if you click on the camera thing over here, change that to 2000 on both of them. If you want a higher resolution and you want it to be a better quality, then I would change it up, but it's going to take ages with this because it's a rig and it just takes longer, so I wouldn't bother. You want to change the film to transparent, then you want to go over to this little world sign, go down to ambient occlusion and ticket. Now we want to add in the lighting, otherwise it's going to be super dark, so we're going to right click on a body part again, and we're going to hold shift and A while we click lamp and area. Once you have adjusted it to however you want it, you want to go over to the settings area over here and you want to click on this little thing that is basically the area lamp um, and you can scroll down until you see the nodes. You want to click on that and you want to change the color to the kind of orangey or at least that's what I like to do. You can play around, you know, if you want a pinky, like a kind of peachy kind of tone if you want it like that. I like to go with like a yellowy orange, like an in between so it's like that kind of color. And then we want to check on the camera so we're going to go over to view camera and find the right position and then you want to go over to this little thing where it says object mode go to the right and change this to rendered this is not going to render it don't worry if it's not done this is just going to show you how it would look as edited and you can just play around say if you want it a little bit stronger you can make it 200 but i think i'm probably going to actually keep it at 150 for now and that's pretty much what you want to do. So if it's right, then that's great. And you can go over to render and render image. If it's not, then you can just click out of this, go back to material and you can just kind of switch around with it and just make it however you want it basically. So I'm going to render the image. It's going to take quite a while. So I'm probably just going to skip till it's rendered. So now that it's done rendering and doing all that, so all you need to do is go to image and save. Now before you exit out of the program, I would just go and make sure that it is there. This is what it looks like right now and I can add that on to any thumbnail. As long as the background is white, it will come up when you put it on something like an image, it will come up as transparent so you won't need to get rid of a thing. If it is black, then it's not going to work and you're going to have to redo it if you want that. If you followed all the steps then it should look like this. And that is pretty much it for the tutorial. I'll be doing another one where it will be like the GFX backgrounds. It'll have the another one for the props and accessories and hair and things like that, as well as editing and how I put it into my thumbnails. I want to do another video where I talk about how I, like, I make my thumbnails because I just feel like it'd be kind of fun to do. So if you like the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Also make sure to join the giveaway. I'll be announcing the winners in a few days. It was just because of the band wave that I didn't announce it sooner. I hope you all enjoyed. Bye angels.